hi loves oh my god it's really really too much to tell right so actually that's why i decided to cut this video into two parts welcome to part two but this time i'm just summarizing everything <laughs> because i know this is way too much tea and it has actually given me a very good idea for some of the key points I'll do videos about them, like I'll do a video about divorce and starting afresh in Germany, I'll do about dating experience and so on. So just hit me in the comment section, you can even actually tell me what video you'd like to see next, so I respect the kind of order that you'd want to have these videos. But through wanting to tell you all this tea, I've gotten more ideas uh, and the kind of information that I can give you that you'd all be interested in. Um, thank you for watching till now. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Turn on your notification um, button. And then speaking of social life, maybe I'll go direct to the lifestyle. Uh, the lifestyle in Germany, I'll start with the good side. Germany is, of course, it has its big pros for example the health system is top in comparison to you know my home country where i come from uganda in rwanda um of course much as our countries are doing their best and considering the third world countries they are really doing well but you can't compare the health system here being someone who's uh very fashion affine and loves fashion and loves looking good and uh i would say i love the soft life uh german lifestyle is very good for me i love the shopping possibilities you know like I'm not limited and I don't really, you know, like it's amazing to know that I can get into the car or just get a flight for one hour and go to another country to shop. For me, that is luxury of the highest order because it's very important to me. So like the lifestyle I would say is good, um, but of course there's still a lot that is missing. Uh, I miss, like I said, the casual spontaneous lifestyle in Uganda where I would go to the hairdresser like every Friday, um, where I would go to the manicure and pedicure beauty parlor every Friday, where I knew that I would get a facial and a body scrub every Friday or Saturday, but definitely weekly basis. You know, like without even having to struggle so much to get the appointments or the flexibility, you know, um, I miss that here. Um, for example, ever since I came to Germany, I've been doing my nails most of the time because the services or the people that offer these services i was very skeptical about it uh like i'm someone who's very picky i'm very picky when it comes to hygiene standards and i did feel comfortable by some of the service providers that offer these services and uh, but most of these people are not like indigenous german people they are people you know of migrant background uh like me um another thing uh, that is interesting is actually that should have been at the top place because that was the like the most challenging interesting and something that i consider very very important uh, once you move to germany that's learning the language so i told you i i relocated to germany in autumn i don't remember the month i think it was around september so before i came like i said for me it was very very important for me to remain independent to you know like get not get stuck because i know the power of language the power of speech the power of being able to present yourself so one of my goals or one of the things that were very important to me when i came was as definitely going to learn the language as quick as possible and believe you me when i got here i made sure i joined um, a language school exactly two months later so we got here in September, I think it was around 18th September, not even three months, weeks, we got here 18th September and I think mid-October I was already doing my language course. Unfortunately, it did last so long because I got pregnant quite immediately, very fast. So I was actually doing the language course for, I had done it for three months and then because for anyone who is a mother out there, you know how it can turn out. I was very sick. I was throwing up like five, six times a day. Um, and I had to stop going to the course. But shortly before I stopped, uh, it had been announced that for anyone who would love to do the exams, if you think you're fit enough to do the exams, just send in your application and do the exams. Because of course, there are many other people who had been doing this course for years and years. And the most interesting bit, there's also an incentive you know, to make sure that the people who are doing this course for years, 
maybe you can get some motivation and the confidence to the exam so like if you do this exam and you pass it you will get i don't remember how much it was i think it was 360 euros or 460 euro you get it as a price you know so i was like oh that's pocket change you could use it for shopping why not so i told my husband about it and was like really i was like who cares if i don't pass it i don't pass but i want to do it so i was like i had very kind teachers very amazing teachers i can't say their names here but god bless them so i talked to them and i was like i want to do that exam they're like bitter bitter means like please i was like isn't that the bit you've been here only three months and it's really tough exam and i was like i want to do it that was i think the bay one or something like that uh, so I was like, I want to do it. So they put me on the list. Uh, all the time I said going to the course, but she told me when the dates are announced for the exams and everything, she would send me an email, which she did. God bless her. I remember the day I did the exam, like, it was crazy. And they had to put me, like, in a separate room because, like I told you, I was throwing up, like, every five minutes. So they put me in a separate room. I had my own flask. Of course, the other parts of the exam where you have to have, like, a partner, do cross examinations everything i have to go through that you know breaks in between lucky enough i passed that exam and that's how i continued by doing all the exams that I had to do but i never went back to a language course i just learned i'll say by doing i learned along the way i never ever went back to a language course i just learned along the way by myself and being a mom and then i just had uh, to always go for the exams whenever they were announced on different centers i'll just apply so my people that's a, day, a video for another day but i would encourage you once you relocate to germany actually even if, if you have the chance like to do it before you come here learn the language it can be very empowering it's very important and that's something i'll talk about um in another video um it's something i forgot to talk about when i talked about winter of course i experienced my first christmas here i had never been in germany over christmas people I'm not a Christmas person um, and I've never become one because for all the time I've been in Germany, actually the only time I'm here over Christmas is the 24th and mainly for the kids because German has a very special way of celebrating Christmas like on the 24th, that's the time when kids open presents and, and you're there as a family, you eat, you watch a Christmas movie so it's very special for the kids and I also find it very special in comparison to like how you celebrate Christmas in Uganda so but i've never really become a christmas person because i don't know i think i'm also a weird dude. you know like i always say i'm a very introverted person today i learned i'm actually a, a ambivert, but i'm not sure about that because i'm more of an introvert i think to like 90 percent and 10 percent an extrovert so it's still complicated so i actually don't like the hustle around christmas you know like normally if i was to stay in germany that means 24th you're doing like alone your small family and then 25th also alone 24th like if you have grandparents you can be with them 25th alone and then 26th that is boxing day you like meet relatives cousins uncles you know and that's that's not my thing you know like like ah uh, i don't know i think i like excitement i like it's too routine routines i would do it one year yes but every year it's too routine for me it's too boring for me so that's why actually we always travel over christmas time and for over the years we've always done something like we celebrate the 24th when our flight is like at midnight you know and just fly over to dubai to go ahead i can't list the countries we've been to like but definitely every 24th like at night we've always like flown away after the, doing that small celebration or the 25th early in the morning we just go away somewhere else but we've never done like the proper mm, german christmas um routine of 24th 25th and 26th um gosh it is so long but i thought it would be fun to tell you all about it uh what else have i experienced during my journey i mean i've been quite long here it's coming to 11 years so um you can imagine i have a lot to tell what else can i tell you about the timekeeping in germany so let me tell you for those of for the people who are close to me of course it's not a shocker to them but one thing i love about germany is the timekeeping i love that and let me tell you it's not something that i got into when i got here i've always like i've told you my character i'm 
I'm kind of a perfectionist. I'm very structured. I like things moving. I love reliability. I don't like this business of we'll see. I don't like that statement, we'll see. I don't like people who dilly dally. I'm someone, if I say I'm going to do something, I'll do it. And if I'm not going to do something, I'll tell you I won't do it. And if I tell you I'm doing something at two, then I'm doing it at two. So definitely when I got here and got to know the culture, how everyone is, you know, like disciplined, I was like, thank you, God. Thank you. You're amazing. Because I really, really, really can't stand when someone can't keep time. And for my African brothers and sisters out there, that would be something really nice to pick up from the German people. Keeping time punctuality is a form of showing respect okay so um another interest, interesting bit would be um driving in germany like i told you uh before i relocated here i made sure that i got an international driver's license because um i didn't want you know like to to be dependent on anyone so i decided i'm going to get my driver's license so that when i get to germany i'm able to to remain mobile you know like when my husband is working i'm not so dependent on him i don't know how many times i use that license like the international driver's license because like i told you i came in autumn winter happened and i got so scared so basically i think the only time i got to drive was like drive to the shops like do grocery shopping or just go to the cafe because i was not working at that, at that time so i was basically very idle very bored uh driving my son to kindergarten and you know just hanging out every once in a while i was hanging out a lot by myself because in my head um at first i thought it's you know you call people up i had very good sisters in law but every time i tried to plan something with them they're always busy so what i'll do i'll wake up in the morning you know take my son to school have breakfast out actually i think the first year i was always having breakfast out like i would go somewhere to a cafe have breakfast uh, after that go shopping i think i was shopping like every day and with shopping i mean shopping buying this and that <laughs> but my husband tolerated that because he knew how difficult the transition um was for me so i never basically got to use my international driving license for a long time um, for the long distances, my husband was always driving me or like when I had to drive to the salon, to the Afro hairdresser, uh, we had to use the highway and so I wouldn't drive because I was very, very scared of the highway. Speaking of the highway, anyone who's been to Germany, if you have Google, just Google what German highways are. They can be very exciting. They can be very orgasmic if you love driving, if you love cars like me. But when you're new to the German driving system, it can be very scary um so for me during that one year i also managed to do my driving license like in the german system way doing my theory exam doing my practical exam so i did my driving license when i was actually very heavily pregnant at like seven months and uh it was very important for me to get my you know like the german driving license before getting my baby because i was like okay here i'm going to get two babies i'm not yet working uh, the life is complicated like i told you the social life is almost next to none so i wanted to be absolutely independent to know that i'm capable of you know deciding i'm going to drive off for the weekend or whatever and i don't need to like beg anyone or to to make someone fit me into their schedule so <laughs> maybe i'll tell you about my driving license experience one day but yes i thank god i managed to get my driving license before getting my second baby and uh, started driving more often but for driving on the highway it took me quite a long time like every time i had an appointment that required me to drive on the highway i would always ask my husband to drive me or sometimes uh, my sister-in-law one of my sister-in-laws we had a very good relationship so she would drive me or i would drive with friends um yeah so <laughs> so as you can notice it was not very easy uh, like you know getting into here and fitting in but uh, I thought I should share this with you because those are some of the things that people never think about or consider before relocating to Germany or any other country um, another thing that is different in German compared for example to Uganda or Africa is the mentality the life mentality for example here in Germany people live more for the future like people think more for the future when you're speaking to a german person you know when you're working or you're talking of your dreams 
they talk more like yes uh, when i'm 50 or when i'm 65 and i and i mean going to pension i'll start traveling i'll fulfill this and this dream and then me as an african girl with my upbringing um i'm there thinking pardon me when you're 60 and i always use that a lot when i'm talking with my colleagues and friends and i'm like who gives you the guarantee that you're going to live to be 60 or what the hell I, are you talking about traveling when you're 60 who knows maybe your knees will be work you know you you'll be sick there's no guarantees and i'm like i want to travel now where i know i'm healthy and i'm assured of that i mean i even don't know what will happen tomorrow how can i plan for the next 40 years so that is the clash of culture differences so personally i still live my life like that i'm not saying it's not good to save money to save for your future for your pension for your health care but there's definitely no way i'm going to push off my life for when i'm 60. i have no guarantees that i'm going to be 60. and even if i made it to 60 i still won't have the same fun i mean i'm quite well traveled like you all know and believe me i've been in places where you get to meet people these are people who are very 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 financially well off um but they apparently postpone their life to the time when they'll be in pension and uh we're living in the same hotel we're going to the same beach we're going to the same restaurants and when i look at them and compare to the standard of their holiday or what they're getting out of their holiday to me who is now still able-bodied still full of energy to enjoy everything it even makes me believe more that the decision i made or the way we african people mostly live and that is living in the moment is the right thing to do because these are people that for example have paid the same amount of money like me to stay in a five-star hotel and go in a five-star restaurant but they're not having the same fun as me because most of them are very old or they're sick or you're sitting in a wheelchair you're not as mobile as you'd want to be you know several different reasons why they are not able to enjoy that holiday as much as i'm enjoying it and then i'm like i'm definitely going to live my life now so for me my my appeal would be live in now live in the moment save definitely save for your future if it is there because none of us knows uh, we just live and hope that we have a future save for your old age but at the same time try to live and don't uh, live to work but work to live make sure you work makes you have a good life makes you happy and not just working you know for the sake of working and when we're talking about mentality then we can dive right into like the nightlife oh my god you all know i'm a night all i love partying i love dancing no no i wouldn't even say i'm so much of a partying babe considering that i don't drink alcohol and all the stuff most people are associated with partying but i'm i'm night babe i love hanging out and they don't necessarily need company to hang out to have a good time but i like clubbing in my experience so far of nightlife in germany is of course the standards are very good like the very classy clubs very classy lounges i love that i love the hygiene i love the like i said the, the class because i love a soft life i told you i love high-end things i don't like too much chaos so that's good um of course when you talk about clubbing for all the clubs and lounges in different nice parting areas i've been to in germany and europe in general because Believe me, I've tried out one of them. Um, the only difference I've noticed in comparison to Africa or Uganda in particular, or Rwanda, is um, the people take quite a long time to get warm. Like people will come in the club and they'll just sit like for the next four or five hours before they can even start to shake or nod their head. You know, because they need to first drink and get really drunk and that's when they can, you know, gain the confidence or the excitement. I don't know. And me, I drive my car all by myself because I want to go out have fun and then I get there the club is full but no one is dancing and then I'm thinking there's no I'm going to sit here five hours drinking water because I don't drink alcohol or anything when I go <laughs> clubbing because I'm not even someone who drinks like sweet things I'm not going to drink a cola it's rare that I get to drink like a coke in my life so definitely I'll be drinking water and I'm like there's no I'm sitting five hours here and just waiting for people to get drunk so they can dance so if you ever meet me in a club or if i ever invite you to go out with me dancing don't get shocked if i get on the dance floor and i'm the only person dancing for the next two to three hours that's what i do because for me i go in the club to dance to have fun um 
for those of you who have known me for some time now on this journey that's my greatest passion so i enjoy that but the difference is i love the vibe in the clubs in uganda or rwanda so for my Ugandan people, maybe one day, definitely, I'm thinking of in future doing a few networking events where we get to meet and network and, you know, get to know each other face to face. Maybe some of you will get to experience me in a club because when I go to Uganda, I definitely go to club like every weekend. That's a must. And the clubs in Uganda are dope. They are fun. Like, you know, we have high class and not so high class. I always go to the nice ones. Let me say, because like I said, I'm very picky but the vibe is always on point and same applies to rwanda and i'm sure that's the case in kenya and tanzania which countries i'm intending to visit very soon so i can't wait for the experience of the nightlife oh my god the points are so many so i'm just going to be talking just briefly about them and for the topics that you're interested to know deeply i'll just do um maybe another video about them People have asked me about racism. I've talked about that in my Instagram lives before. For me, I would say up to now, I've been lucky and my children have not really had like serious cases of racism. Uh, of course, random at workplace. I've experienced a few cases of racism here and there. And recently also at the workplace, you know, sub to racism, not direct. But yes, unfortunately it exists. But I think that's a very sensitive topic that maybe I would have to talk about another time um another thing that people are very interested in maybe I'll, that i would also like to talk about briefly is integrating how did i manage to integrate um guys i can't talk about that now because that's really a topic of its own and that's something i'll be talking about but to integrate you really have to be uh, focused and interested in integrating it does it doesn't just happen so you really have to be focused i'm going to cut this short really um they are finding a job how did i find a job in germany how did i get my qualifications here verified and everything that's something i'll also be telling you about next time but the process is not as complicated as most of you think because i've helped a few people here and there through my dms who wanted to go through that process some of you have been scared up now you've not yet done it but i'll definitely do a video about that and tell you intensively and extensively how you can get that process worked out it's not complicated um oh my god so many stories i didn't know it would be this long oh uh, what, what what is it like to get pregnant like to 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 be pregnant in germany and to have a baby in germany guys that was a very very traumatizing experience for me i mean there's some good things that i'll be talking about when i do another video but it was a very traumatizing experience for me. I'm someone who had always loved to have at least up to three kids, but I'm not sure if I want to go through that again because, oh my God, oh my God. Um, and that was mainly not because the health system was bad, but because of the cultural differences. I think I'll definitely do a video about that to cut this all short because it's getting really long. I'll also be doing a video about getting divorced in Germany or in Europe and starting afresh how do you start over how is it like how is your how complicated is that and of course as a divorcee as someone who's divorced i will definitely tell you one time about the dating experience in europe and how to go about it so once again thank you for watching for this far and listening to all my talking but the tea is just too much and i mean i've been here close to 11 years so of course there's a lot to tell you and to you know to chat about but once again thank you so much subscribe don't forget life with rules hope leave a subscription turn on the notification button follow me on social media handles under the name of rules hope and until then thank you so much and love you Mwah.